If you look at it just in terms, just in terms of economics, let's take a look at abortion, just in terms of economics, let's pretend we're just talking about just a pure business deal, forget about the fact that people are being murdered by the tens of millions, forget about how that scars the women for life, forget about how that feeds into an agenda to wipe out poor people and non-whites, forget about all of that and let's just talk about the business part of this, the economics of it. The American population is about right now, call it 310 million. In the years since Roe versus Wade, about 56 million abortions have been performed. That means that there are 56 million American consumers not there. They're just not there. They never existed in, as a consumer. They never existed. Now, when you go back and you go to the first year, 1973, the children that were aborted in that year, 1.2 million children killed in that first year, 600,000 of them would have been women. You know, roughly, a little bit more, but for the discussion. 600,000 of them would have been women. And in 1974, they'd have been one year old. In 1975, two. In 1976, three. All the way up to whatever year it is they would have been when they would have been 25 years old. In the United States, a woman on average has her first child when she's 25. So those 600,000 women that were murdered by abortion in 1973 never grew up to be 25 years old and have their children who would now be around 20 and getting very close to having their own children. So you can't just count the 56 million people, men and women who aren't in the United States economy because of abortion. You also have to count the ones who weren't born because their parents are the ones who were aborted. That's how you count when you're doing economics. So how many people, how many consumers are missing out of the United States economy right now. Much more than 56 million. There's what we call the ghost number. The number of people who were never born because their parents were never born because they were killed in the womb. So when you take that 56 million and you add to it approximately right now 7 million ghost abortions, you've got 63 million people who would be there right now in the United States doing what from an economic standpoint? Buying and selling, buying houses, working, paying taxes, buying cars, selling houses, because every economy is built on growth, right? Every economy is built on growth. If an economy doesn't grow, it shrinks and dies. So you've got 63 million people in the United States economy. People say, well, don't be silly. I mean, you know, babies aren't consumers. Are babies really not consumers? You ever seen how many diapers somebody goes through? You ever seen how many, you know, little cans or jars of baby food parents go through? Oh, yeah, children cost. Even if they're not out at two years old buying a house, they're sure out spending thousands of dollars on diapers. You have to buy food for them. You gotta take them to the doctor. You gotta see an economy is all about as many people as you can possibly do, moving around and moving around, spending money, generating money, paying taxes, et cetera, et cetera. And even if the baby isn't spending, isn't buying a car when he's one year old, he's gonna be buying a car when he's 25 or 26 or 29 may have bought two or three cars by then. Those cars need fixing. They need to go to a mechanic. One third, one third 
of Americans under 30 are missing from the United States population. One third. And what that has done is it's altered the entire landscape of the American population. When Social Security in the United States became the norm, 42 people were paying into that for every one person drawing out of it. So you didn't have to pay that much into it because if you're drawing Social Security, everyone else in the room here is giving it to you. Today, for every one person drawing Social Security, only two are paying into it. And there's less and less of them to pay as every year goes by and another million or so children get hacked apart in the womb. How long can a culture last like that? Right now, as you all, I'm sure, have heard or seen, the United States has a debt of over $15 trillion and growing, and not a person in the United States knows how to stop it. Do not let this happen in your country because there are forces hell-bent on wanting it to happen here as well.